Hi, uh, welcome back to the channel. Been a minute, as usual, because I am lazy and do not edit my videos and then I forget to do anything with them. So, um, if you're new here, my name's John. I am a full time uh, vintage reseller, primarily through Depop. I do have my own website now. Check it out, um, leechvintage.com. Otherwise, I'm Leech Vintage on Depop. Um, yeah, so been a while. It is now the 3rd of Jan. Don't know when the last time I did one of these videos is. But yeah, um, these days I am on average um, about 80th in the world each week, roughly, which is pretty good. Um, this time last year, I don't actually think I got the emails this time last year. I've had to know my marketing turned on. If you don't have your, you know, those ranking emails, it's because either A, you're not making enough, sad, but I think everyone in the top like 5,000 gets one, which to you is only like five sales a week. You need to turn your marketing notifications on, which I think you can do just by tweeting Depop and they'll do it for you in like a minute. Um, yes. So I think this time last year, I was probably about 800, 100 times better. I'm now 80. Um, I think I hit, I hit 60, 51, something a few weeks ago. Uh, but on average, it's about 80, um, which is roughly 100 sales a week, just so you know. Um, this is, yes, it was sold this week video. Um, I had quite a lot because I hadn't posted since Wednesday. I was going to post Friday, forgetting it was bank holiday because it's New Year. So I didn't do it then. And then because it was New Year, my sleeping pattern was fucked. And I didn't post on Saturday. It's now Sunday. So tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be five days of postage, which is going to be a lot. Um, had a slow last few days running up to Christmas because I think people had already got the presents. No one was buying in those three days. After Christmas, however, had been very good because everyone's got Christmas money to spend. January after, oh, just saw something tasty. January uh, to February normally is quite quiet, if I remember correctly, because there's not really any reasons to be spending money on average. So our average sales will be slower, but still dealing with the Christmas money situation. Um, yeah, so I've already filled up one bag of things. Um, I still have about half to pack though, which I haven't actually got out yet. So I'm going to get them all out uh, and then I'll show you the other half we've got. It's sort of mixed and match just because what was already out. I just saw something else. Whee! Smashing it. Um, yeah, so exciting news. Yesterday I set up a brand new storage area. So I used to have everything in boxes and in Cadillac shelving. So all my t-shirts went into Cadillacs, which is just like four by four boxes shelves, um, which are really good for t-shirts. But everything was in boxes that was like sweatshirts or jackets, or whatever, and they're so heavy, I hate them. Um, it really hurts my back. Whenever something's in like a bottom box, I just do not have the motivation to go and get it out. Um, so I was hoping this would save me a lot. It's also time consuming. I was hoping this would save me a lot of time because um, it's now all excitingly on shelves, which I got on eBay. Um, I think £75 each, two of them. Uh, I'll show you what they are. They're, uh, they're called rack, racks. Um, normally they're, you know, big shelving ones, you know, to put in garages, but I just don't have the shelves and I've just used the site. So I've got two top rails and two bottom rails on each of them so four rails per shell per rack rail where have you gone away um yeah they're really good they are very space taking um however i've made it work uh yeah i advise to do this only if you have the space because boxes are much more space efficient you can fit a lot more into a box than you can to a shelf um but yeah, this is just so much easier for me to just pick and grab things because um, it normally would take me about an hour every time I find my items to grab them to like pick up boxes and get everything out. So this will save me, hopefully in the long run, a lot of time. And they just look sick. I'm very happy with how they look. 
um, boxes break and snap um, and over time will just be more expensive so yeah that's that a five minute ramble uh, which is classic uh, I'll now show you my shells because they're cool to show off uh, and then we'll get into what else I sold that I have not yet shown you which is the point of the video so yeah So this is the sh is shelving, as you can see, we've got uh, two of these racks, I think they're called, um, each are uh, 180 centimetres tall and I think 120 centimetres, no, 160 centimetres across, so you can fit quite a lot into one rack. Um, this one's really each one's, you know, in section. This is all premium sweatshirts, sort of USA style sweatshirts, fleeces and knitwear, um, windbreakers, hoodies, um, track jacket windbreakers, uh, sportswear sweatshirts, and sort of denim jackety things down there. Uh, yeah, they're really cool. They are. I can fit, you know, each one has got space to fill more in if I need to. Um, <laughs> the only problem, yeah, they took a lot more space than I thought they would. My whole room is now pretty much full. <laughs> but and I sort of struggled to get into this area here. But it works. It's enough. Um, and this feels like walking to Narnia every time I go to my desk. It's very fun. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, I'll get everything I need to sell and get back to you right so um look how massive my hair has gone <laughs> and I, I haven't had a cut since um before lockdown two so this is about three months of hair anyway um yeah so we've got um <clears throat> the rest of it it's mostly t-shirts and stuff because I've got out most of the sweatshirts because they're all hanging up. T-shirts, all in the Cadillacs. Um, yeah, so quite a lot actually. Um, I speak a bit lower because it's like eleven thirty and people are sleeping. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So first up, this one. Um, it's nothing special, but what's cool about it is that I actually have it twice. Um, so I believe this is the one that sold. And this is just another copy of it that I have. It's really cool, exact same design, just one's on a different tag to the other. So this one you can see is a bit of a wider neck and that one's a bit thinner. That one's also like a, a larger collar, this one's a bit of a wider collar. Um, exactly the same print, St. Lucia. Um, yeah, I imagine one's sort of like early 90s, whereas the other it's probably a bit mid 90s um they're both double stitched but yeah anyway so i sold this one with a thicker collar this one i have not actually sold next um since you last saw me i have found me a proper full-time supplier um which i basically go in and i handpick from but it's much cheaper than your classic wholesalers um, uh, like Fox or Bulk or anything. Obviously I'm not going to tell you who it is so don't go asking um, but this is a like permanent I can see myself working with them for years um, I don't need chair shops anymore I will be car booting in summer just because I love it so much and it's still cheaper to go to a car boot than my supplier but I get such cool stuff with them um, I get my main focus now is vintage t-shirts like graphic prints um, graphic sweatshirts branded sweatshirts um, football shirts and I guess a few jackets and things so I say rugby shirts I can't remember if I say rugby shirts but rugby shirts are big yeah, I don't really deal with polo shirts or shirts or um, 
trousers, not really any shoes anymore. I'm kind of just focused on those primary things. I do still find a few things with them there, but um, not as much. It's no longer my focus. I now get so many cool graphic prints. That's kind of my, I think 50% is graphic print t-shirts and the other 50% is nothing else. So yeah, you will now see me selling a lot of graphic prints. Uh, I picked these up for about three pound a piece. Normally, pretty much 100%, three pound a piece, which is so cheap. Most of them are 15 quid minimum. Some I have found are worth, you know, like band t-shirts or like promo t-shirts worth 50 quid plus. And everything's just a flat three quid. It's amazing. Um, but I'm not telling you where I get it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much where I get everything now. So when I say I, it's hard to say how much I got something for, assuming the graphic prints is three pounds, but um, yeah. But it's what I sort of pay at the end. It's like silly, yeah, anyway. Um, humbly, so don't give me like, I got this through Panic Chat Shop, I've much always just got it from that supplier now. Moving on. Um, this is one. This is a really cool 90s. Uh, dolphin print Greenpeace, which is that? Well, it's like an environmental charity. I assume most people know Greenpeace. Um, yeah, I've got this t shirt. It's a bit yellowed, um, frayed and stuff, but a really cool print. I think it's over 20, 15 or 20 pounds. Three quid. Um, this is a really cool 90s LS t shirt. Uh, I think I got this one. Yeah, I got this one with my supplier. Three pounds, really cool. Um, it's like a woman's size, UK 12. Uh, that went for 15 pounds, I believe. Really nice colour, really nice colour. Look at that 90s aesthetic. This NYPD t shirt, um, NYPD stuff is just an easy 10 to 15 grid normally. It's not like collectible or anything, it's just people, it's just a basic tourist merch thing. Um, this one's copyrighted 2006, so. 15 years old now, 2021. Officially in the 2001 vintage year. Vintage is technically 20 years ago, so now things you find from 2001 are vintage officially. Um, yeah, that went for 12, 15 quid probably. Um, this is just like a biker t shirt. I think it's kind of a, it's got like a Harley. Yeah, Harley Owners Group. It's not officially Harley though. Um, I think it also has like a beer connection to it. Hog, hog beer or something. Anyway, 1066 hogs, yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, this is just an easy graphic. It's quite, print's kind of cracked a lot. Um, I sold it for 10, quite cheap. A lot of times I get things, the t-shirts are cheap now. I, I'm fine to just vlog them for a tenner and get them moving because I get so many in. I, I keep the best ones at high prices but some of the less cool ones I'll just like yeah cool tenner get it gone. If you are interested in buying some graphic t-shirts from me um, I will be wholesaling them uh, for pretty much a cost. It'll be like five pound a t-shirt probably something like that depending on how I won't show you what I, I'm giving you, but you can trust. You see the stock I get, you can trust it's going to be good. Um, just, yeah, I get them in so quick, I don't mind uh, passing them in a bulk every now and then. Um, it will be good, I'll give you pieces worth 15 to 20 quid. A few will be £10, but they'll always be more than a fiver. So you can easily double or triple your money with something like that. Um, it's just that I get so many in, I'm happy to just pass them on. So if you are interested, do shoot me a message on Instagram, at Leech Vintage. Um, yeah, just let me know, and I'll they'll probably work in bail in bundles of like 10, 20, maybe if you want more, we can probably work out a better deal, but I would say for five pound a piece, free shipping. Yeah, just let me know, shoot me a message. Um, cool, next is this. If you neck Nike t shirt, I think I got it at a kilo sale. Um, early noughties tag. Uh, so, kilo sale, it probably was like three quid as well. Uh, that's gone for 12, 15 pounds. Quite a nice little khaki olive green. V necks are normally slower. I kind of regretted it once I bought it, but still sold for profit. Next, this one, 
famous player. Uh, he is a Boston Red Sox t-shirt. It's got a nice back graphic. It's not that old, it's 2012, but quite a nice big print. Um, NFL stuff would always sell, but I went for 15, I think. Uh, this one's so cool. I love this one. The problem with it was just like, if this wasn't my size, I would have kept it. But it's kind of like a woman's or an extra small. Is this 90s O'Neill? A really big graphic on the back. Small hit on the front. Lovely, thick collar. This was really cool. I think it, that's, I don't know, O'Neill tags too well. But that looks 90s to me. Early noughties, late earliest. Yeah, that went for 20. Um, I think it was on sale from 25 because I've had it a while. Just the size was making it sit. Um, that was a men's like large XL. I could have got like 35, 40 quid for that probably. Yeah, moving on. Um, three pounds, this bad boy. Stussy. I find a fair bit of Stussy now. Um, three pounds for this cracker. Sold for 35, just classic spell out print. Um, next, Versace. Also three pounds. See some sick deals I get. Uh, I hate, I kind of hate finding designer because I'm really bad at legit checking designer gear. Like, I don't know what tags look good. I'd rather just, like, sportswear fakes. I'm really used to identify because sportswear is just, it's obviously, the tags are obvious and consistent. Um, the quality is always consistent. But with designer, it's just so rare to find that you can't consistently be like, okay, I know that Nike tag, I know that Jack tag. So you just don't. So that one, I'm, I've had people, I've asked people, I think it's real. The print and the quality look really real, but it's just so hard to tell. So that's £35. And that's um, early noughties, spell out t shirt, nice sort of ringer collar. Um, I think I brought it in a bundle. A while back, I don't know how much I paid for it, um, but it's gone for 12 15 pounds. Classic, there's another really cool graphic. This one is a 1993, uh, just some random rugby team tour, but it's just got a really nice graphic to it, single stitched. Let's talk to Canada, just yes, yeah, nice color. Um, it's really cool. Twenty pounds that was, I believe. Um, I actually don't think I've sold this, but it does matter. This one is just Canterbury, England, rugby top. I think I got this in a charity shop for like four or five pounds. I sold it for twelve. England rugby stuff just does well. Canterbury, I think, is from like two thousand and fifteen onwards. 2014, so this is an older Emmy. Um, yeah, I think all the stuff before 2015 was Nike. I'm going to have to over then. But rugby stuff always does well. This, I know it was for, I think this is a band. Because uh, it says World Tour Hong Kong 1991. So this is really cool, like old single stitch t shirt. But it's probably just not a very big brand. Not very well known, but it's just a cool little, and a thing with like a date. And single stitch for all it's just sell for like 10 to 15 quid even if it's not got anything crazy on it um getting into sweatshirts now hoodie this one one of the best of the day this bad boy uh probably paid around <laughs> around a fiver for this which is so sick um but obviously they're very rare to come across um it's this center swoosh hoodie size small Everyone knows the Nike hype. It's kind of settled at a price now. It's like you find a Nike spell out, like a vintage one, it's going to go for about 80 to 100. Uh, 200, 300 prices are long gone. About 80 pounds is fair. It seems to have settled there for a few months. Um, people seem to be realizing that the fakes are fake. <laughs> so hoping that that market will saturate itself out, the fake market, and all those trying to capitalize on importing those shitty fakes from China will uh, be stuck with them and not be able to sell them and then that's their fault for selling fake crap. 
I can do a whole other video on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, anywho, uh, basic cost t shirt, nothing special, £12 from £3. Um, this one I've had for a long time, I don't get these anymore because they just bore me. Um, plain polo up and t shirts, just there's nothing special about them. Long sleeve, I might get, but don't bother these anymore. It's just a pocket tee, light pink. Probably paid one two quid at the boot sale, sold for 12. This one is cool, I think. This is a bootleg. Um, I know I had, yeah, it's definitely, sorry, it's definitely bootleg, like you can see from the tag. Um, I know what I just said about uh, <laughs> the fakes of the Nike. But with my, my opinion of bootlegs are, bootlegs are, uh, I love bootleg, I think they're really sick, often, um, the Nike ones are cool, like the Polo Sport ones are cool, the Tony ones, they are cool, they're like authentic 90s designs, there's like a history behind them, but with, uh, when you do find them, I don't believe you should overcharge for them, because in the day they're not authentic, they are cheaply made, they're not good quality, um, and yeah, sometimes they are brand new design from China, like the Nike ones. But when you find a good authentic, like made in the 90s, probably made in the USA bootleg, and it looks sick, I'm all for it. I have a couple of myself, they're really cool, but you shouldn't be overcharging for them. Um, and people should not be overpaying for them. Like, just buy a real one, they look cool. Um, yeah. But this, I said that is a bootleg. I kind of guess you call this fake because it's not like an. It is copying the design. Whereas bootleg is normally like taking its own approach to a brand, like it's its own unique style. Um, so this is a Polo Sport fake, I guess you call it. Um, fleece tag. They never have this sort of like loose tag here. It would always be attached to the main tag. And it's also just not got any inner labels. But it's a really good quality one, to be fair. The fleece is really thick, really warm. Um, so this sold for £25, which I think is fair. Um, it's a really nice colour. You know, if this was real, that would be going for 50, 60 quid. So, yeah. Um, a few caps now. I get caps for £2 a piece. I love them, I find three cool ones. Basic Ralph, £2, sold for 20 um, FUBU, uh, I rarely find FUBU, it's not really my thing, what I do, it's kind of, I think it's like a, uh, this history behind it, like rappers and basketball players, but I don't know enough about it, but a FUBU cap, sold for the 25, um, this is brands to account for, if you don't know it, Maharishi, they're like a high fashion brand, um, I, this is the only thing I've ever found from them before, um, it's just this cap, really cool embroidered uh, design on the front. I don't know much about them, but I know they are like a new up and coming designer brand. Um, uh, Barbados Taurus cap, really nice little denim wash, and cream, just embroidered, really cool, going for a tenner. Um, there's one more cap somewhere. Anyway, cap fleece. Always, always find these when you when you buy these when you find them. Very simple, simple sellers these days. I used, I've only just started picking them up the last few months, but I should have been doing it since the beginning. Well, I don't know about that. I think I've only just come into fashion. Uh, probably because of Kanye. Kanye used to work for Gap when he was a kid, and so he announced a few months ago he's going to collab with them. Um, it's just like a an ode to his childhood. But yeah, um, spell outs only really go. No, just get a cap. But the spell outs obviously do best. Uh, this is a nice fleece. Spell out. 30 quid. Paid a fiver. Um, this one I've had for a long while. I blame it on the fact I got my friend, female friend, to model these, thinking that a new way to sell shirts would be to get my to get a girl to model them and like tie them up and make them look cool and rather than market them to men, I was marketing them to women. I think that was a mistake. Um, 
the soul stone. I also didn't want to have them all tied up, and I didn't take not tied up photos, and I don't know why. And I just never got around to repicturing them. So I've got a lot of Rav shirts just sitting because they're poorly photoed. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice one. It's um, green and white striped coloured pony. Um, that sold for £24. Um, I don't know how much I got. Boot sale, Fiverr, I'm going to say. I don't know. But yeah, I don't really find shirts too much anymore. Just because I don't. I always hated looking at shirts because they're just 99% Burton menswear or M&S. Um, you only ever find like one worthwhile shirt when you sort through them, so it's just not worth the time. Uh, yeah, anyway, this is an NFL jersey for the 49ers, I think San Francisco 49ers, if I'm not mistaken. Martin Pack's all printed. So lower value, you want the really like, embroidered ones, they're the top market ones. Um, I don't I really, I'm not too good at pricing uh, USA sports stuff like NBA jerseys and NFL jerseys and whatnot. I know that embroidery means more, but I don't know like beyond Brian or Jordan. Like, I don't really know what basketball players are worth the most. I know nothing about NFL players. So I don't know what particular names are worth more or yeah, what makes a jersey worth more than others. Anyway, moving on. Um, this is a I think early North, early teens Barcelona Mascherano t shirt. Uh that sold for twenty. I found a David Villa one with it as well. Like that sold the same day for twenty quid. Probably underpriced them to be honest. I think named Barcelona t shirts from that era, do with that era especially that Xavi, Neymar, Iniesta, not Neymar, Xavi, Neymar, Messi, Iniesta, uh, Pio, David Villa, Mascherano, you know, that era, golden era, they're worth a lot, and I could have priced them up more. Anyway, this is a just basic 90s, um, late 90s Nike Polo. I wouldn't pick up a Nike Polo normally, this is plain, but just black tag called to me. Because it's rare to find in the UK. Um, yeah, so that was £3, I think it's all 15 um, Ralph Polo, paid a fiver. Um, sold for 15 I, I, I mean, the sold so it was fine, but I just I would avoid these normally these days, as I always say. But had detailing, which is why I picked it up. But plain ones, I would never bother with now. This one's really cool. I love Aubrey shirts. They can be worth so much money and they're just slept on. And some are so cool. This one's a early noughties, late 90s England. I'm going to say late 90s. Um, yeah, really cool. It's on a Nike team tag. It's the away colours. Um, and England rugby shirts can be worth between 30 and... 60 pounds. Um, the 2003 ones are probably worth the most because that was the year they won the World Cup. Obviously, the later they get, they're worth more than the earlier ones as well. Um, they've got to be cotton, you can't have the, the like the thick uh, shirt type material rather than like the more modern polyester -y ones. Um, but yeah, really cool. This sold for 45. Um, Cool. Next, oh, this is a juicer. I love this one. Uh, paid a fiver for this. Boop. Absolutely incredible find. Tommy jeans, rugby shirt, fully embroidered Tommy crest. Mad stripes. Big fan of this. Big, big fan. Um, this sold for 75 quid from the Lovejoy's margins. This one's really cool. These are kind of rubber shirts I do like. These sort of um, colour block. Just random teams, not even like national teams or branded ones. Just really nice colour block designs. That often have like a cool crest and like a really nice vintage fade. So this sold for 25 I paid a fiver. I paid like £5 on sweatshirts and rubber shirts, no matter what the brand. So I could find a 
vintage blank is below a five and it's worth maybe like 10. And then I could find a, yeah, a center solution like worth a hundred and also pay a fiver. It's a very weird pricing system, I, I do that, but anyway. Um, Ralph Rugby, uh, I think this was car boot season, I think. Um, so probably, probably about a fiver, really nice, really nice one, like really embroidered designs, this sold for 40. Um, this one's cool, I've got this, I've got this flyer, it's like this just denim, vintage denim. Weck, I don't know what Weck is, but anyway, don't even be sure. Um, nice light wash. That's all 20. Um, this is a woman's uh, Lorraine, Ralph Lorraine shirt. A really cool um, North School print. Uh, yeah, all over North School print. Very wavy. Um, I think it was part of a, a modern remake of some of the vintage ones they did. But very nice. I paid like five quid at a charity shop for that one, I think, back in the summer. Um, and it's gone for £28, I think. So, yeah. Uh, Nike Essential. Just a plain modern. Literally, not, not even got a tag, it's just printed. But Nike Essentials like this just sell no matter what the age. Um, so that's 35. Um, this is a really cool Calvin Klein spill out. One men's size. Picked up for a fiver again. Uh, but it does avoid it spell out there. Really cool. 35 again, I want to say. Um, this is really nice. Picked this up just a week ago. Another Nike Essential. Just an Essential hoodie this time. A really nice colour pink. Couple marks. So this sold for 40. Really quickly. Happy with that one. Uh, this one I actually got a couple years ago for personal. I was really into pasta at the time. Um, and loved them Bobby Reed. I think this is an independent brand, which is really cool. Agora. They have their own page on Depop. Um, but I just never wear it anymore. I think I just don't really do cork zips. I don't know why, but yeah, I was just saying my wardrobe was getting too big, so I was having to clear out. Got rid of this one. Uh, and it's gone for £20, I think. But it's going all the way to like Australia. Um, someone's doing a shoot with it, which is interesting. But yeah, really cool. Do look out for Agora on Instagram. There's some really nice stuff. Um, this is just a classic Umbro sweat. Early noughties. Basic essential Umbro. Is it must just be the worst quality ever for really making every single umbro item you ever get will just be so bobbled. It's just every single one needs a shave, it must just be awful quality. But anyway, um, that was 35 again. Uh, Ralph hoodie full zip, um, so 25. I love that an umbro item is worth more than a half of an item. It's mad, isn't it? The resell of things. Um, yeah, that's got 25. It's just a nice pure white. A couple stains. Without stains, it would have been like 30 quid. Um, but yeah, imagine the Umbro was probably like 25 back in the noughties when you got it brand new. And the Ralph then was probably like 120. Now look at them. Market is weird. Anywho. Um, this is just a cool vintage blank, but custom tie-dyed Hanes sweatshirt. Um, yeah, 90s, someone's clearly done something to it, it's got a couple of holes, but a nice just cool design. It's gone for 15, paid a fiver. But this one, I really like this one. Um, this is a vintage, uh, I don't think it's vintage, I say vintage, it's probably quite modern actually, but Billabong. Um, sweatshirt, just a really cool graphic on the back, and it's sold for 30 I think. Um, this one is something I would never normally sell, but it came in a bundle. Uh, one of my contacts, I said, he comes to, he comes to me like every three months, being like, I've got some stuff, shot and buy it off me. 
I normally say yeah because it gives me good stuff but some of it will be like because it'll be like his own wardrobe that he's clearing but he can't want to sell it himself which just goes to me but some of it will just be like his girlfriend's clothing thrown in there um and so I got this like velour crop top from Boohoo never something I'd pick up um <laughs> But I got it and I paid for it, I guess, per piece. So I had to sell it. Got my girlfriend one lip. It's gone for eight quid. So, yeah. Um, get to the end slowly. Uh, just a pair of Nike joggers, um, size XXL, it's quite big, late noughties. Navy joggers are just essential pieces. Do pick them up if you find them, they sell so quickly and easily and quite high, like you always get 20, 15 to 25, depending on the age and condition. Um, white tag ones I've seen, like white tag Nike ones I've seen go for like 50 sometimes. Um, so yeah, just always pick them up, they're essentials. Uh, a few fitty shirts, we've got this Portugal one, not sure on the era, but probably like 2016, 2012 maybe. Um, Classic Ronaldo fives. Went for 20 quid. Paid a fiver. Um, paid a quid for these. These are just, I think, unbranded, so fake, I guess. Uh, France shorts. Just really simple, quite small, but gone for a tenner. Um, Reebok trackies. Very basic. Wouldn't pick these up really these days. They've gone for 12. Probably paid a couple quid at a boot sale. These, however, are cool. These were from a pre-loved kilo sale. Um, so these are probably about 10, 10 quid, I'd say, based on their weight. Uh, but these like uh, early noughties, champion poppers, all the way down. Very nice. These are going for 40 quid, I believe. 30 or 40. But yeah, you can mark up on those. Um, last couple pieces, I've got this 2002 Inter Milan jersey shirt. Um, yeah, Inter Milan have had pretty much the exact same kit for like 18 years. They've been sponsored by Pirelli, I think, since like the mid 90s. Um, and they've just never really changed the kit whatsoever. It's very bizarre. Um, so it's really hard to ID these unless you really look closely. But yeah, this was 2002, I think, 2004. Um, that's gone for 35. Um, yeah. I got that for a fiver, I see. And this one, last thing, this is my favourite today. Um, I'm not a Palace fan, Crystal Palace, but uh, this is one of my favourite ever finds. It was in the summer at Car Boot. And some woman was clearly selling off her husband's old palace collection. And it said, I've got loads of palace stuff, pound a piece, take a look. And all, all the clothes were just in a massive heap, so I had to like hunt. Um, but I think I found five, six palace, five shirts and a pair of shorts, all from 2002 or later, or earlier. So I found um, a 1995 away shirt two 1996 home shirts, uh, the matching shorts from that season, a 2000 shirt and a 2002 shirt. Um, and this, I think, is one of my favourite designs on a, on a football shirt ever. Um, it's, it's so cool. Very reminiscent of the buy-in kits. Um, and it's just, oh, it's beautiful. I'm not a Palace fan, but I can appreciate a nice kit. And that is just so juicy. Like the the centre. And spell out the massive badge, the felt sponsor, the stripes, the material. Mm. Very, very, I get so much palace stuff because I live um, in sort of London area. Uh, so I get a lot of Arsenal, I get a lot of palace, I get a lot of um, like Chelsea. Um, so yeah. I, I do have a lot of vintage pants stuff if anyone else is interested. I've got a really cool Lecoq Sportif uh, sweatshirt, which was like 2002 era. 
but yeah, got that. I paid a pound and I sold this bad boy for 90, which is probably one of my best percentage markups ever. So, yeah. Very nice. Um, and with that, that's the end. 45 minute video. Classic. I'll try and do more of these again. No promises. I'm not going to promise anymore because I don't know. But yeah, um, I'm not going to bother editing that because I think editing them is what demotivates me to list them. So it's just going to be me spurring your price. There's no longer going to be a image of what I sell. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you've all had a great new year and Christmas despite our shitty government um, and Nerona. But hopefully a few months will be done. Um, yeah, looking forward to back to normal. But I am interested to see where the vintage market goes post lockdown. Because obviously, I think most sellers will agree they've had a very good year uh, with the boom of online shopping. But will that continue when shops permanently reopen? Who knows? But I'll be doing a video, uh, I think, summing up my 2020 and my future plans. Um, so stay tuned for that and yeah peace check out my store um neechvintage.com or at john leech on depop um find me on instagram leech vintage i am also uh running i've started a mini page called um vintage awards uk uh, I got inspired for this, so I'm going to have another like, five minutes of me rambling about this now. Um, yeah, there's a page called Vintage Awards, which is like for US sellers, uh, where they just, at the end of the year, um, put forward nominations for various different type of awards, like Best Find, um, Best Haul, Best Seller, Best Instagram, Best... It's a bit niche out of America because the market is very different to the UK. But yeah, I thought I'd do something like that for the UK sellers. Um, just to celebrate us, support each other, um, give people names out there, and just a bit of fun, really. Um, yeah, so it's vintage awards underscore UK on Instagram. Um, send it if you have any like friends uh, or any of the other stores you want to nominate for these awards. I think I've got best. Um, Instagram, best uh, YouTube, TikTok, podcast channel, hinted, um, best um, brick and mortar store, best, I was going back, best finds, uh, best, so that's best designer find, best sportswear find, best wildcard find, then I've got um, biggest contribution to the community, most sustainable store, uh, most knowledgeable, and then biggest twat, because there's, that's basically just for Callum's Cupboard, hi if you're watching, Callum's Cupboard versus Liquid Garms basically, um, yeah, so that's that, do please, good page follow, I'll be doing stuff throughout the year with it as well, I like just shout out people, um do some random polls and shit i don't know um yeah do your follow it'll be really nice so nominations are closed on the 10th and then i'll do a week of voting and then announce the winners after that um yeah so get that follow just send me some shout outs some nominations uh if you found anything this year that you're like really proud to have found like a really cool piece send me a message own it um, and I might put you forward. We'll see. Um, yeah, on that bomb, Michelle. Peace out. Happy New Year.